Hello there and welcome to Complete Games and this is the story of the Complete Crew. Tribe mates Romeo and Jaybird have been building an army that will take on all of the island bosses and they really have come up with a unique system for stacking mutations without the use of mods. And in this playthrough the tribe has had to think outside of the box to get this stuff done fast. And the results speak for themselves as they have made perhaps the greatest production line ever seen in Ark Survival Evolved and it really does deserve a video dedicated to how efficient this production line is. Today the island crew will be facing off against all of the island bosses and doing our first run. Our first fight will be against the Broodmother and we will be taking Rexes into our first fight. Each Rex has about 8 mutations and around 30k's worth of health and they're stacking around 500 melee damage. Of course each one has an ascendant saddle. The Art of War by Sun Tzu states if you know neither your enemy nor yourself you will succumb in every battle. War is a part of life and it's in the nature of most living organisms to win, to dominate. And our first battle begins with the Broodmother, a giant spider that spits a devastating poison at its foes and summons more minions to its cause. Brute force is an incorrect strategy here. High health and the ability to soak damage is the best tactics. After establishing a good surround on the Broodmother with our Rexes, I use the Uteranus to courage raw each one. Megatheriums have also been bred for this fight and would be a great option. They may look like giant sloths but they are literally the island's insect killer and when fighting insects including the Broodmother, they enter an enraged state that makes them almost unstoppable. But for the first fight against the Alpha Broodmother, the complete crew has chosen the classic T-Rex. Each member has of course imprinted their own T-Rex. This means a rider will take 30% less incoming damage and also deal an extra 30% outgoing damage. Having a full imprint on any creature gives it an extra 20% increase to all of its stats regardless of having a rider so it's critical to beat in this game. I myself act as the support class on the back of a Uteranus and fully coverage roared each Rex will gain an additional 25% damage and a reduction of 20% incoming damage. Again, the key to beating Ark is in breeding. A whole list of tech engrams are unlocked upon defeating the Broodmother and the complete crew are successful and unlock the engrams for both the tech helmet and boots but it's the trophies that we will need to enter the final fight. Our next foe will require more focus. Sun Tzu would say the highest form of warfare is to attack strategy itself, to ensure our own invulnerability and to wait for the enemy's vulnerability. The key here is to wait for your opponent to make a mistake and exploit it. The Megapificus wants us to come to him Face him on the high ground where the team is vulnerable and can easily be knocked off the side of the bridge. So tribe mate Jaybird volunteers to aggravate the beast and brings the fight to a place where we can all get a good surround on the creature. Once again I play a support role on the Uteranus, courage roaring all of the Rexes. The key to beating the giant monkey lies in having high health and soaking the damage. Sun Tzu distinguishes nine types of battlegrounds in the art of war. If the ground is strategically advantageous to either side then it must be exploited. The Megapificus is easily triggered and its recklessness is its biggest weakness. We make short work of the Megapificus and this time each member of the complete crew opens the tech gauntlets engram and we all defeat the Ark's second ultimate life form. But to defeat Ark's third guardian the complete crew will need a new strategy. The Phenoxenosaurus is often overlooked as a boss fighting creature, but I think in this case my fellow co-creator Bunner says it best. Over to you my man. Athena, she's the goddess of sex, like Gillette she's the best that a man can get. Forget the other deities for she's the almighty, straight up stripping the title from that imposter Aphrodite. Athena, she's the bringer of death, even Thanatos trembles at the sound of her breath. The other dinosaurs just call her Santa Claus, forever coated in red and always bringing the claws. Black Lab! 
Khan come forth! Let justice be done upon him! The island's final guardian is the dragon, a creature that dwarfs both the Broodmother and the Megapificus, and is by far the hardest guardian to defeat on the island map. A strategy is required here and the complete crew has opted for the Thenos, a herbivore so perhaps it can be overlooked as a good potential boss killer, but to increase its ability to heal in combat, each creature is given 10 veggie cakes. When a herbivore consumes a sweet veggie cake it will restore 10% of its health over 30 seconds, and this particular group of fairies has roughly 13 mutations, and has largely been stacked in melee damage. Each creature has roughly 20k health and almost 1k in damage, which is almost double the melee damages of our current Rexes. Glass cannons are the key to beating the dragon, as regardless of the creature's health, the dragon's fire breath will deal 20% of anything's maximum health, as well as doing some direct damage. Brute force is the key to winning this fight. Tribe mate Vexing Cat has been given the role of directing this fight, and will certainly have the hardest job. A Uteranus is literally only a couple of hits away from death at any time in this arena. Even with a good Ascendant saddle, she must do her best to avoid being hit and ready to jump on a ferry should the creature take too much damage. Since the introduction of Genesis Part 1, the Magmasaur has become the go-to creature on official service for this fight, but the complete crew will not be using exploits to jump maps and has to deal with what's available on each map. The Magmasaur is invulnerable to both lava and its fire breath and is a creature that is available on the fantastic mod map for Jorah, a map that I personally can't wait to play and I look forward to facing the dragon on there. But the complete crew will have to use the cards it's been dealt on the island map. The dragon summons minions to its side, in the form of hostile Tyranodons and Dimorphodons. So each member is bought in their best armour, along with medical brews and Kalian soup. Another old but popular exploit is Wyvern Milk, as this will make the dinos and players invulnerable to its breath for a short time. But just as I've done in my personal playthrough, the complete crew can only use what's available on each map, and no dinos or ingrams that are available on other maps can be used here. We go into battle only with the items and tames that are available on each map. We're all aware how much easier this game would be to complete if we could jump maps and grab different dinosaurs. Even the use of mods like S Plus or Unlock All Ingrams makes Ark a far easier game to complete, so the true completionist must only use what's available here. Roughly halfway through the fight, tribe mate Vexing Cat has to abandon her Uteranus and jump on a ferry. Like water, the enemy changes all the time, and Sun Tzu encourages us to derive victory from our changing circumstances. It's then that the dragon gets stuck and the complete crew uses the situation to our advantage dismounting our creatures to fire our shotguns. The final blows come from the creatures itself, as it can glitch out if the final hit comes from a player. And of course, the final piece of tech armor is unlocked. Once again, the complete crew give a masterclass on how to defeat Ark's guardians. We lose one UT and one ferry, but mid-fight we was able to recover the ferry saddle. And even though the UT perished in the lava at the end, his saddle was disposable and unable to be reached. The complete crew is now ready to take on the island's final test, the Tech Cave. But will they be successful in their efforts to ascend? A big shout out to Bonner for letting me use his Athena track, and I'll leave a pinned comment down below so you can check out the full track. As always, a big thank you to those of you who have made it here at the end, and of course much love to all the names scrolling up the screen right now. I look at you the same way I look at dinosaurs. Basically, you're awesome. And until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see ya.